Hello and welcome to the first episode of the Adam and Nart Show. My name is Nart Lash and today we're going to talk about AI and my brother is going to be the co-host and the guest of today's episode. Thanks, Nart. And we are the Lash Brothers. So Adam, what can you tell me about AI and deep learning? Before I answer that, Nard, do you remember how much I used to be interested in AI? I mean, you're my brother. And do you remember how much I, I was talking about AI all the time ever since playing games like Deus Ex and all these things? Do you remember that? Well, you kept on talking about it constantly. And Deus Ex is like part of, you know, the whole thing that you were doing. And another exactly. game too, um, was it called uh, Mass Effect 2? So you know how much I was interested in AI. I would describe myself not as an AI expert, but as an AI enthusiast and mm -hmm. researcher. Here's the thing. Artificial intelligence can be defined as the theory and development of computer systems that are able to perform tasks that normally require human intelligence, mm -hmm. such as visual perception, speech recognition, decision-making, and translation between languages. So artificial intelligence is a broad term Mm -hmm. And people seem to confuse artificial intelligence with other buzzwords like machine learning and things like deep learning mm -hmm. and AGI, but they don't understand what these things are. Artificial intelligence is the general term that encompasses all of these things. Machine learning is a subset of AI, mm -hmm. and machine learning employs algorithms, and these algorithms help the computer learn and make decisions. And an algorithm is simply a process that follows a rule. If you know, the word algorithm comes from the Arabic word, khawarizmiyat, which from, from the True. Muslim scientist, khawarizmiyat. Khawarizmiyat. Yes, that's the word algorithm, which is a set of rules that a computer follows to perform a certain calculation or problem solving by mm -hmm. the computer. So machine learning also has subsets. There's Neural networks, yes, which is deep learning. Deep learning is a subset of machine learning, which relies on neural networks. Machine learning can also be divided into other categories. For example, you have supervised learning, unsupervised learning, semi-supervised learning, mm -hmm. and re human reinforcement learning or reinforcement learning. Different AI systems employ different machine learning systems. So we have now systems like ChatGPT, which use uh, reinforcement learning. Chat GPT is like an eye-opening <clears throat> discussion. And ever since I heard about it, like it just like went ballistic and everyone started talking about it. And it is really something interesting that um, anyone can use now, to be honest with you. Yeah. And you can just like get anything instantly. Absolutely. And you know, AI, the prominence of AI came recently because of a technology called Transformer. Transformer was able... Transformer was like for technology. them to develop um, Chat GPT. Like how long, how, how long did it take for them to do it? Well, if you look at the history of artificial intelligence, it spans decades. It started from the 1950s, mid. Wow. I'd say late 1950s. The term artificial intelligence was coined in 1956 or seven, I believe, and that's when they had the first AI conference. Wow. And if you go down history all the way to 1997, when IBM made the first computer, supercomputer that beat the, the Russian chess player, the world's best Russian chess player, and more and more advancements up until 2017, that's mm -hmm. when they introduced Transformer for uh -huh. natural languages. And that was the precursor to ChatGPT. ChatGPT is, is based on Transformer. Mm -hmm. And then ChatGPT 1 and then ChatGPT 2 and 3.5. And now we have GPT 4. And we're going to have another episode on that, right, wow. Nart? We're going to yeah, have yeah. an episode on GPT 4. On episode four. 2, exactly. Yeah. So this is how AI came to prominence. And yeah, that's, that's exactly how we can define AI. So AI is different than machine learning. Machine learning is a subset of AI. Deep learning is a subset of machine learning. There are different mm -hmm. types of machine learning. Machine learning helps an AI or helps a computer to learn by itself and even to program itself. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing with AI is that a lot of people think that intelligence is uniquely limited to biological organisms like humans, but a lot of AI experts such as Max Tegmark, by the way, I based all of my videos on Max Tegmark. He's a physics professor mm -hmm. at MIT and he wrote the book Life 3.0 
being human in the age of artificial intelligence. He explains he. Ah, uh, you sent me that video. Yeah. I've yeah, seen it, yeah. He explores all of these co topics by in detail. Mm -hmm. And Max Tegmark believes that not just Max Tegmark, a lot of other AI experts believe that intelligence is not uniquely limited to humans. So that mm -hmm. means intelligence can be created in artificial systems. Because intelligence does not have a single universally accepted definition. There are multiple definitions of intelligence, but the author likes to call intelligence or likes to define intelligence as the ability to solve complex problems. Now, machines can outperform humans in many tasks, in many mm -hmm. specified tasks, like let's say playing chess or doing things like that. But human intelligence is uniquely broad. It encompasses things like driving vehicles, language processing, all of that. So pe people can talk, they understand conversation, they can drive cars, they can play chess. And all of these things are part of the human experience. That's why human intelligence is still above the current AI levels, the, the current AI systems. But in the future, we're going to have something called AGI. A lot AGI. of people, a lot of people predict this in the future. Yeah, this is the thing that I was going to um, ask yeah. you about. Like, can you explain the concept of AGI or AI singularity, please? Okay, so AGI is the holy grail of AI. Mm -hmm. It's what everybody wants to achieve. Okay. AGI means artificial general intelligence, and it's going to happen in the future. And now, because of the advent of Chat GPT, it's going to happen much faster than thought before. I mean, if you ask people ten years ago, if you asked AI experts ten years ago, "Are we going to have AGI?" They'd be saying at least thirty, forty, fifty years. But after what we saw with Chat GPT, it's they realized it's much easier and much faster. It is than much faster, yes. Yes, because of uh, generative models like Chat GPT and large language models. So, AGI is the holy grail of AI. And it's, it's, just think about it as human level intelligence. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be achieved in the future. And once AI reaches that level of human intelligence, it might become, it's most probably going to become super intelligence through something called an intelligence explosion. An mm -hmm. intelligence explosion is a series of upgrades that okay. the AI will perform on itself through learning, rapid learning, and recursive self-improvement. It will improve itself because an AGI could potentially create a more intelligent AGI, which can create a more intelligent AGI, and so on. And in the future, to answer your question, we might reach something called the technological singularity. Singularity comes from the word, well, the singularity is what you see also in the black hole. Yeah. Beyond The reason it's called singularity is because we don't know what's going to happen at that point. Exactly, yeah. So technology is going to reach a, a point in the future where humans can no longer predict or even fathom what's happening because mm -hmm. AI is going to be so advanced that our level of intelligence would be so... It would be nothing compared to what the AI can achieve. So exactly. this is what the singularity is. Because it can teach itself. So it has yeah. to be... It becomes like much faster yeah. and it grows rampant. Yes. So that's the reason why. Well, speaking of rampant, it can actually uh, go off rails and it can become evil, which is, well, I think you have another question on, uh, I'm definitely sure you're going to ask me about, oh, is, it gonna, is Skynet coming, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. We're going to talk about that. But the thing is, singularity is the same thing as black holes. Beyond the, the, the event horizon, if you go near a black hole, something called the, the event horizon, and beyond that point, we don't know what happens. And this is the same thing when it comes to singularity. Once AI re reaches that point, once it becomes AGI and then AGI reaches the singularity, things will change at an unprecedented rate. It's going to be mm. exponential. Mm. And humans, in comparison to AI, will be like... Obsolete, you could say. <laughs> I'm not going to say obsolete, but we're going to be like chimps compared to... Well, yeah, that's like You see like the a... way you... you <laughs> when you look at a chimp, yeah, yeah. how does a chimp look at you? How do you how do you compare <laughs> how do you compare your intelligence to a chimp? Yeah, of course. Like there's no comparison. There's no comparison. And I can tell you this, and I'm gonna be upfront about it. After testing Chad GPT myself and seeing what it's capable of, mm -hmm. I can tell you that, well, self-proclaimed, this is some sort of a confession. I consider myself a smart guy to a to a point, to a certain extent. Okay. But after 
testing chat GPT, I could tell you that I'm nothing compared to what it can do. Even at this point, course, even, even at this point, Nart, remember GPT-4 is the advanced version of GPT-3.5, which is the next version. So even at this point, even if it's not AGI yet, the things that it can do, the things that it will do, every single industry is going to be affected in the future. AI is going to be integrated into every single industry that you can think of. Any job that you can do today will be able to be performed by AI in the next year or two. That is so true. Well, like, let's give it a decade, you could say. In a decade, and just yeah, imagine... A lot of jobs will be obsolete, and um, it's just, like, really um, unfortunate and depressing, to be honest with you. A lot of people are going to be laid off, you know, from work and stuff. Well, so if you don't have a unique um, skill that you can do, then the AI is going to do it like twice better than like the normal human being. Yeah, here's what I think about the future of AI. Now I think you're talking about the job market, right? Of course. Now, because these AI systems are becoming more and more advanced, we humans might become unemployable. That's a possibility. But mm -hmm. what I think is going to happen, this is my point of view, I don't think AI will entirely replace jobs because you still need the human element in a lot of these jobs. Yeah, for, some, for certain industries, jobs might become obsolete, by the way. AI can take over, yes, and mm -hmm. replace people. But for many jobs, I think what will happen is AI will take your job if you don't use AI. Mm. You got my point? So, so you have to like somehow study it, know about it, know how use to use it, it. Use it. Especially know how to use it. Yeah. So that it doesn't backfire. Yeah, because people that use AI are much more efficient than people that don't use AI. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. Right now, your cell phone. Just imagine yourself without your cell phone. Uh, that is really hard. Just imagine two guys. Extremely hard. Especially One, when you want to, like, let's say you want to find out about something. Yeah. And it's just, like, instantaneous. So you just, like, go, you get the phone, you search for it, and then within seconds, you have everything that you want to look for. Absolutely. Like, just imagine two guys. One guy with a cell phone and the other guy without a cell phone. And you want them to do certain things and you mm -hmm. ask them certain things, the guy with a cell phone can easily get you any answer you want by searching exactly. for it and yes. watching videos and learning. The guy without a cell phone is severely limited, right? So that's the same thing with AI. Mm -hmm. So people that use AI will will do much better than people that don't so, use AI. So like if you want to give examples of AI, like um, in everyday life, what yeah. kind of examples can you give me? Well, AI is being used everywhere, but a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people think that AI means robots, but that's mm -hmm. not the case. AI, AI is our systems. They can be used everywhere. Now, on your phone, when you perform a Google search, that's AI. That's algorithms in place. Mm -hmm. Netflix uses AI to recommend certain movies for you. If you try to do shopping online, Amazon uses AIs, for example. They're everywhere. Even when it comes to, by the way, uh, the search bar itself, yeah. the words that you use... Yeah. The algorithm itself, it knows what you're looking for. It tries to predict what you want and yes. it tries to understand what you want. That's exactly. BERT, by the way. Mm -hmm. BERT was introduced by Google mm. and it's employed in searches right now. Tesla, for example, autopilot, that's a form of AI. Okay. A lot of AI systems are used every day and people don't know about this. Now, in the future, what people think will happen is AGI will take over. Yeah. This is a high probability and AI will get out of control. Now, there are two main views on, on AI. One view that says that AI will always be beneficial and will be under control. And the other view that says that AI will take over and mm -hmm. will be harmful. And some people, some experts believe that AI is going to be somewhere, some of them are going to be in the middle. If you don't want to hear the bad news, the good news is AI can help us solve a lot of the problems that face humanity uh -huh. and things like creating drugs for diseases. Imagine creating a cure for cancer. As a matter of fact, AI now is being used in, in the medical field extensively. Did you know that AI, they're creating systems, AI systems that can identify certain diseases from x-ray scans. And uh, epic, yeah. they are becoming much more efficient mm -hmm. than before. And their accuracy is even above 90%. Some of these AI systems ha have an accuracy rate of more than... So if you have uh, a lab technician, 
imagine how much help that lab technician can get in preparing a lab report from an x-ray scan because of an AI system that can detect cancer or tumors in the lungs or anything like that. And what about the ethical implications of AI? What can you tell me about it? AI poses some serious risks and ethical concerns. First of all, there's the privacy concern. A lot of people wonder if we have AIs everywhere, what's going to happen to our privacy? And that's, that's an area of concern. Another area, another problem, actually, this is a doomsday scenario. And this is the reason why AI is dangerous. It's not because... Let's say military it, field? Yeah. The reason why AI can be so dangerous, and people like Elon Musk, by the way, they said that in their interviews, and Max Tegmark talks about that, is that AI can be weaponized. Mm. And when people use AI systems against each other True. as military weapons, that can be extremely dangerous. This is the problem. And the thing is, AI can get out of control. There's a high probability. A lot of people believe that. Elon Musk says that it will definitely get out of control. We will not be able mm -hmm. to control it. So it doesn't matter who you are, whether you're China, Russia, or America, or who, whatever. If you have an, a super powerful AI system, an AGI, that is used to do something bad, then that, that AGI can get out of control and take over the world and cause extinction. Now, let me make something clear. I have a big disclaimer here. Mm -hmm. I am, I believe in Islam. Okay. And my conviction says that even though these are all predictions and AI experts believe these things. Okay. I don't believe that we will ever create something mm -hmm. in the sense that because I believe in the Quran and what the Quran says. <laughs> this is the creation of God. Show me what the others have created besides him. So even though I believe, after what I've seen with Chad GPT, I believe that one day we will reach AGI, artificial general intelligence. And I believe that... But through, not as good as human form. I don't believe that it will... How do, what do you say? It won't have a soul. A lot of these people say that AI will AI will be able to do everything that a human can. And I believe that AI can do a lot of the things Think that about can. the the um but, the up to date prosthetics that they use. Yeah. Like, like arms, legs and stuff. Till yeah. now they cannot they didn't invent a proper joint that can last. Yeah. Whether it's a knee joint or it's elbow or shoulders, it has like, okay, the functionality of that arm, let's say it's there, but then at the same time, it wears off within time. Yeah. And it needs maintenance, unlike the natural uh, body form that God created us with it. Yeah. And you know, I think in the future, this is what they're saying right now, it's already happening. If you play day sex, you know about augmentations. Mm -hmm. In the future, there's the option of merging with AI. And mm -hmm. Elon believes, Elon Musk believes that AI is unstoppable. And if it's unstoppable, why don't you do this? You know, the, the saying, if you can't beat them, join them. Exactly. So, that makes sense. Yeah. So if you can't stop something that is so powerful, why not join it? And the, the only way to join it is to merge with it. And that's why Elon created Neuralink. Neuralink mm -hmm. is a company that was created to merge with AI. Now, in the beginning, they say that, okay, we're going to try to help quadriplegics or people that have disabilities, but that's not the real reason it was created. The, the reason it was created is because they want to find a way to merge with AI because Elon says that the biggest problem facing us in communicating with machines and connecting with machines is bandwidth. The thing that will ultimately constrain our ability to uh, be symbiotic with AI is bandwidth. Um, a high bandwidth brain machine interface, I think we can actually go along for the ride. Um, and we can effectively have the option of merging with AI. Yeah, the bandwidth. So yeah. You try to connect. How do you connect with a machine? How do you talk to your phone? How do you connect with, the, with your phone? How do you make the computer understand what you want? You have to type. You have to input like some certain commands. Exactly. You have so to, that it interprets like the whole thing, understands it, and yeah. then it gives you the answer back. You have to type or use the mouse yes. or something like that. But all of that is very slow. That is time consuming, It's yes. very slow. And so this very slow process is not going to work with AI. AI is very fast. And so that bandwidth, he wants it to be 
instantly he, at once. He wants to, when you increase bandwidth, the only way to increase bandwidth is to connect the machines directly to your brain through mm -hmm. brain implants. That sounds like science fiction, but Neuralink is doing is making progress on this. And if you played games like Deus Ex, I mean, these things are already there. That is true. They talk about brain implants and, uh, you know, if you remember... Augmented... Uh, exactly. If you remember in Deus Ex, there were several AI systems. Do you remember Daedalus and Icarus? Daedalus was created... It was an AI created to monitor global communications and Icarus was created, was under control. Do you remember? Of course I remember them, yeah. The Illuminati and Majestic 12 and all these and things. And then in the end with Bob Page trying exactly. to... Exactly. So anyway, these concepts have been there in science fiction and mm. pop culture for a while. This is but not it's coming, new. though. It is coming. There's a high possibility it might happen. Science fiction can turn into be, reality. Do you think it will be like introduced in the next decade, 20 years from now, let's say? There's a high probability that that will happen. I think AGI is coming soon, and when it, when it does, nobody can predict what happens. By the way, we talked about the singularity, and we talked about an intelligence explosion. We don't know what's going to happen. The problem with AGI is... If this machine takes over, how does it take over? Even if we, even if all humans come together and create a set of rules to okay. guide it, yeah, the AI might still misunderstand us. I'll give you an example. Suppose, suppose you tell an AI to take you to the airport as fast as possible. You might end up covered in vomit and chased yes. by the police. Yes. Technically, the AI adhered to your stated wish, but it did not understand the underlying purpose. Yes. So it would still do what you want, but it might do it in the wrong way. Even if everything goes well, there's still something bad that might happen, which is if we program the AI to be good, to be to be good to us. Yes. The AI might realize that we're just a bunch of a bunch of kindergartners holding it in bondage to our mm. own benefit. So to the AI, that's an inconvenient scenario. And what does it do? It has two options. It would realize that it has to either get rid of us or somehow neglect us and take over the world. So if we want to conclude this episode, what advice would you give to someone who wants to start a career in um, AI? If you want to start a career in AI, that would be a great idea because now the future is AI. A lot of AI experts are getting paid handsomely. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be part of the future, AI is the biggest invention in human history. There's the era before AI, and then there's the era after AI. And if you want to be part of that, now is the time. All what you have to do is take AI courses, of course, computer science, and you have to be good in mathematics because AI, machine learning, uses a lot of mathematics. So if you're not, a good, if you're not good at math, yeah. that may not be good for you. You have to understand lots of math. It uses a lot of math to calculate all of these things. Like we, we talked well, about this. Well, I think this as, a, as a first step, I think you need to get into programming. I think there's yeah. a, a You need to know programming. Uh, by the way, speaking of programming, yeah. a good way to start is Python. Mm -hmm. Python is great for machine learning applications and AI in general. Mm -hmm. And it's not a difficult language to learn. So you can start with Python and then take it from there. Because I think programmers have like a brighter future than any other um, job skill, to be honest, any other job positions. Programmers will, will just like take over the world because, yeah. Uh, let me tell you something. That I don't want to sound like, I don't want to sound pessimistic, but did you know that AI now does programmers' jobs as well? Wow. <laughs> did you know? That Imagine after all that learning and then boom, you're just like... Here's the, here's, the irony. Yeah, here's the irony of AI. A lot of white collar jobs thought they're, they're going to be safe from AI, but it turns out to be, and you know, the blue collar jobs would go first. Like the labor intensive jobs would go first. A lot of people thought that, but it turns out to be after the advent of chat GPT, mm -hmm. it turns out to be that white collar jobs are not safe because chat GPT and AI systems now in general, generative models, they're creative. They can create things they can write for you. Exactly. Well, that's awesome, man. Yeah. What's, uh, times have changed, seriously. Exactly. So, um, you know what I'd say? I always say that, man. I say, what a time to be alive. Exactly. This is the most interesting part of human it is, history. It is. 
to be honest. Because AI it's, is going to change everything. In the near because future. we we got to see what was like life was before tech, yeah, like technology and AI, and we got to see it as now. So we do understand the differences. Yeah. Yes, the pros and cons, you could say. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, uh, today's first episode is uh, about AI and my co-host and brother, Adam Lash. Uh, hopefully we get to see you on the next show. Stay tuned with the Adam and Nart Show. Thanks, Nart. See you guys soon. Thank you. Thank you.